Um, so my most recent book is called Trick or Treatment, Alternative Medicine on Trial. And I co-authored it with a professor of complementary medicine, Professor Ed Zard Ernst. And um, I suppose, it, I mean, I'm a physicist by training. And my books in the past have been about cosmology and mathematics and cryptography. So writing about alternative medicine was a, was a big jump. But the reason that I wrote about alternative medicine was that um, I was kind of angry and annoyed at some of the claims that were being made by some treatments, such as homeopathy. Um, I knew enough to know that homeopathy really is just sugar pills and has no real benefit to patients beyond a placebo effect. And I wanted to make the public more aware of homeopathy and some of the other uh, ridiculous claims by alternative practitioners. Um, now, I'm, as I said, I'm not a medic by training, so I partnered with Professor Edzard Ernst on this book. Uh, he is interesting because he used to be a homeopath, though so he practiced homeopathy as a young doctor in Germany. And then he went off to become a researcher in rehabilitative me medicine and so on. And then he decided to come back to homeopathy and herbal medicine and other alternative medicines and to use his research skills to find out whether these treatments were actually effective. And the more research he did, in general, the less effective he found these alternative treatments to be. So I think we made a good partnership. We had his medical expertise, his background as a researcher, his background as a homeopath, my interest in alternative medicine, and my background as a writer. And in the book, what we do is we look at um, the, the main alternative therapies in each chapter. And by main, I mean acupuncture, herbal medicine, homeopathy, uh, chiropractic. Um, and then we have uh, brief summaries that look into all the other alternative therapies, from Reiki to Shiatsu to Ayurvedic. Um, and the book has been criticized quite heavily because people have called us anti-alternative. We are not anti-alternative, we are pro-evidence. So where there is evidence that something is effective, such as there is evidence that uh, St. John's word might be effective for mild depression, there is evidence that irritable bowel syndrome can be helped by uh, hypnotherapy. Where there is evidence, then we will support an alternative therapy. But where there is no evidence, then we say so categorically. Uh, where there is evidence of harm, we say so categorically. And I think this book, this book is really intended for patients, it's intended for parents who want the best for their children. And, and I think we have given um, the widest and best uh, opportunity for patients to see what evidence is out there. So when alternative therapists talk about evidence, they sometimes talk about, oh, I had a patient who made a, an incredible recovery, or I've used homeopathy all my life and I'm fantastically healthy. Um, this anecdotal evidence is interesting, and anecdotal evidence is often a starting point, a jumping point for, for doing serious research. And the serious research is what we, we really consider in the book. Um, so if I want to test homeopathy, I'll conduct a clinical trial. I will take 100 patients here who maybe have migraine and 100 patients here who have migraine. I will give this patient homeopathy and I will give these patients a fake pill, a dummy pill. And then I can compare the difference. It's important to have comparisons because whenever you give a pill to somebody, um, or typically when you give a pill to somebody, they feel better. Uh, there's a psychological response. It may be an environmental response. It may just be a response due to the course of time. So to take into account all of those confusing factors, we have this control group. And we see how the two groups compare. And with homeopathy, there have been over 200 clinical trials. And we look at the, the best quality clinical trials, those with the best randomization, the best controls, the largest number of patients. And when we look at that data for homeopathy, I'm sorry to bang on about homeopathy, but it doesn't work for any condition whatsoever. Uh, when we do, do the same kind of thing with acupuncture, we give 100 people real acupuncture, we give 100 people fake acupuncture. Um, how you give fake acupuncture is an interesting question, but I, I, won't, I won't go into that now. But when you give these two groups real acupuncture and fake acupuncture, for pain and nausea, there is a minor, minor benefit in this group. So there is small amount of evidence to suggest that acupuncture is effective for, for pain and, and, and nausea, but it is only minor evidence. And I suspect with even better clinical trials, that evidence would disappear. 
Uh, but I can't say it's ineffective. I can only say that the evidence is, is very weak. For everything else, uh, acupuncturists will make claims in relation to diabetes and asthma and eczema. For all the other conditions, acupuncture has no good evidence to back it up whatsoever. Um, th there are some people for whom homeopathy, let's use the example of homeopathy, is, is a faith, it's a religion. Uh, practitioners of home homeopathy, practitioners of herbal medicine, whatever evidence I show them, I don't think they're going to change their mind because their belief system is embedded in their medicine. Um, they take a naturalistic, uh, traditional view of, of medicine and they're studying, their, their, their whole life is built around their alternative therapy. I cannot change their mind. But I hope I can change the mind of, of patients. Uh, patients don't really have a great philosophical or world view about medicine. They just want to get better. They just want their children to feel better. So the book is really intended for patients, I think.